Hi, Glenn here from Digital Photography Courses. Welcome to this quick session where we're going to look at how we can do a super quick edit of the Orion Nebula um, in around about five minutes in Photoshop with five simple steps. So um, hopefully what we can do at this time is go to a shot like this on the left and turn it into something like this on the right. Now, just before we start, we, let's have a talk about uh, the picture. So this was a stack of 120 15 second images. Um, it was taken on the move shoot, move rotator, and that's, that's a total exposure time of around about 30 minutes. Uh, I didn't play any dark frames, but I did do some uh, flat frames because that lens does uh, vignette quite a bit. Um, they were taken on a Nikon 7200 and the, with the Tamron 16 to 300 millimeter lens, which I used at f8. The ISO was 800, and of course they were shot in RAW. Then the images were stacked in Sequator. Um, I sometimes use Sequator, I sometimes use um, Deep Sky Stacker, but I do find Sequator is quicker, and when we just want to have a quick look at the images, you know the situation, you've kind of been out there, it's late at night, early hours of the morning, and you really should be thinking about going to bed. And, but you kind of don't want to go to bed until you've at least got an idea that everything's worked out and you've got a picture. So the purpose of this sort of quick, super quick edit is really think of it as a proof. It's an ideal way to kind of um, get to see what your picture looks like and then when you've got more time, you can go and spend more time on it. Uh, now, before we start into Photoshop, there's a few things we just need to um, understand. If you're going to do this, you need to understand Photoshop shortcuts. Um, and we're going to be using these shortcuts all the time. And so I'm just going to run through them for you. Um, if you've got a Mac, it's uh, Command. If you've got a PC, it's Control. I'm using a PC. And so if we press Control or Command J, that will duplicate a layer or a selection to a new layer. Then we've got Control or Command L. That will bring up the Levels dialog box. And then we've got Control uh, M. That will bring up the uh, Curves dialog box. And the other one we're going to use is Control or Command U for hue and saturation. Okay, and as long as you've kind of got those down, I'll put those down as we go through, and um, that will speed up your workflow. So there are people that will watch this and say, well, really, you should use um, adjustment layers rather than levels and curves. But and I absolutely agree, you know, and I do most of the time. But when we're doing something like this, it's quick and easy, then uh, this is the best way to do it, or I find it's the best way to do it. So let's go and uh, come out of the full screen here. And we're going to go, hopefully, from this to this in around about five minutes. So let's get started. So here we have our background layer, and the first thing we do is we press Control or Command J. Now it's good practice to rename your layers, and I'm going to call this one LS, which stands for Levels Stretch. It's quicker to type LS than it is to type Levels Stretch. And then the next thing we do is we press Control and L to bring up our Levels dialog box. Now, if we look at the histogram, you can see all we've got is this column. And what we need to do is we need to do what's called a stretch. So to do a stretch, we take, ignore the white one, go to the mid-tone one and pull it halfway towards the column. Click OK. Control L again, halfway towards. Press OK. Control L again, halfway towards. And now you'll notice that we're moving from this left hand side. So bring the, the black slider to the kind of the heel of this foot, if you like, or you know, the, the side of the mountain or the column, whatever you want to say. Click OK. Control L, halfway towards. Click OK. Control L, halfway towards the peak. Bring the foot of the mountain back in again. Uh, now this triangle here at the bottom, you can chop that off because that's this vignetting here in the corners. And what we do is we'll just bring that in slightly. There we go. And what we're looking for is it kind of being level with the bulk of the column. And we'll do one more. And you can see here we really are now getting quite a good stretch. And again, we'll just bring the blacks in slightly, just keep some contrast in there again, but stick in with the bulk of the column here and click OK. 
Good. That's levels done. Control J to duplicate. And this one we will call CS for curves stretch. And bring up the curves. Now, the important thing when you're doing this is to protect the core. This will go so quickly if you're not careful. So what we're going to do first of all is use this uh, target adjustment slider, this one here. Go to a dark area of the sky and pull down. And you see that adds some nice contrast. Then we're going to come here to the nebulosity and keeping one eye on the core, we're going to push up with the nebulosity. But making sure at all times that we don't burn this out. And we'll click OK. Control M again. Again, we'll just come in, same tool, go into the blacks, the shadows here, and just pull down slightly. Again, we'll just take the nebulosity, we'll just pull that up a little bit. Again, just watching this area here. It is bright, but uh, don't want to lose that. There we go. Excellent. Cool. And let's just zoom out, have a look. Yeah, we're not badly off there. Might just do one more. Oops, that was levels. Cancel that. Uh, curves. Might just do one more. Um, we can always, if we want to, just pull it in from the side here. There we go. Get ourselves a nice dark colour. But we don't want to go totally black. Excellent. So that's the curves done. Duplicate the layer. This one we're going to call HS for hue and saturation. Control U to bring up the hue and saturation. And just pull the, just a margin for you, pull the saturation slightly to the right. There we go. Give that a nice boost. Excellent. And that's saturation done. Control J. Now the next thing we just need to sort out is the background colour. I don't know if you can see, but the background down here is a little bit kind of purpley. So I just want to sort that out. So we're going to call this one PG for background. And we're going to go back to the levels. So bringing up the levels, um, we've got the RGB channel. But what I want to do is I want to look at the channels individually. So let's have a look at the red channel. Okay. And the green channel. Not a lot of green in there, as we can see. And the blue channel. Now you notice the blue channel was wider than the others. So what we need to do is if we go to here and just pull the blues down slightly, you can see that we're taking some of that purple out. Now still a bit of red in there. So what I might do is just go to the red channel and just very gently in the shadows, just take some of that red out. But not careful not to lose it here in the nebula. And there we go, guys. We went from that to that in five easy steps in probably around about five minutes. I didn't really time it. So um, I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you did, please like, subscribe, comment, do all that sort of stuff, ring the bell. Um, and uh, hopefully I will see you again soon. I'll post them down in the description. I'll sort of post the, the method there so that you can go and have a read of that as well. Okay, thank you for your time. Bye now.